sometimes you get a hold of an idea. And sometimes an idea gets a hold of you. Two and a half years ago, I'm sitting in the basement of, of the library of UMass Amherst, working on a paper. It's two in the morning, but I already know it's going to be an all-nighter, so I take a break. And I watch a 20-minute lecture on open source economics by Yokai Benkler on a site called TED. And like a flash of light, I realized the revolution I've been living through and been blind to. I realized how the internet has changed our personal freedom in terms of how we can access an infinite number of ideas. I realized how it's given us the power to put our ideas in front of millions of people. And I also realized how it's changed our society in the way we can form groups, share, collaborate, and take action together. And I start to think, how can we use this infrastructure, the sort of infrastructure that allows us to create a Wikipedia in the world of information and ideas, and use it to solve the big problems that we have in the real world? So, that summer, I quit my job in construction, and I got into politics. And by the end of the summer, I'd been sent to Virginia to help run a voter registration office. And when I got to Virginia, and later as I rode my motorcycle through the South, uh, I realized this second revelation that different places attract different kinds of people. <laughs> and that while we have similar problems, across this country we have very different values, and we have different strengths and different assets and different ways that we need to solve them. And when I came back to Massachusetts, I realized that there was data to back this up, especially in terms of the reality of political migration. In 1976, uh, in one of the closest elections in that century, you can see that when you look at w which districts were won by landslide victories, you see that Carter carried the South and Ford carried the upper Midwest, but a large portion of this country was very well politically integrated. Democrats and Republicans lived side by side. People had conversations with those they disagreed with. But over the last 30 years, with about 5% of our population moving from one county to another each year, we've seen a new reality. We've seen liberals moving to liberal cities and conservatives moving to conservative counties. And while this is great because it allows us to choose the reality we want to live in or shape our communities in a different sort of way, it's also created real-life echo chambers where in the closest election in our history, 43.7% of the population lived in a county that wasn't competitive even slightly and only 23% of our population has had a conversation, a real conversation with someone they disagree with. So... When I saw this, I, I realized if we're going to get, and this has political consequences as well, not just on partisan issues, but on every issue. So while the federal government was meant to be a moderating influence where ideas from all across the country would be brought together and we'd find moderation, you see a Senate social graph where voting patterns look like this. And the middle is a very lonely place. So when I saw this reality, I thought if we are going to get serious about democracy, if we're going to get serious about solving the problems that we're facing, we need to focus locally. And since I didn't see anybody working on that problem at the time, I figured I might as well try it myself. So when I got back to UMass, I was fortunate enough to find the Entrepreneurship Initiative. And though I had no idea how to start a company, I found mentors. And though I had no money, I found the UMass Innovation Challenge, where I was able to get enough people to believe in the idea that they would fund the company, and that's how we've been funded it for the last two years. And more importantly, because I didn't know how to code, I found some of the best developers in Rails in the western side of the state. And so what we got to is a, a way to put our beliefs into practice. So Localocracy is a, an online platform for political participation, where we believe that the answers to a community's problems can come from those people. And so, uh, and that there can be a, a real interaction between citizens and their government. We believe that uh, people should be using real names and that people should be able to stand behind their ideas. We believe that uh, there are two sides, to, at least two sides to any issue, and we believe that the community can identify the best points. So where do the issues come from? In many cases, the issues have come from the government themselves when they've asked us to go into their community. In other cases, regular people in the town can propose issues and put them in front of their government. And so while these are, they can read the issue, they can ask and answer questions about the issue, they can rank the best reasons for supporting their side. And the reason we split commenting into supporting and opposing is so that you can 
Although, though the two sides might not be talking to one another, they're in the same space and they can recognize that there are valuable contributions from both sides. So uh, what we've been able to do is these are our small issues. Right? These are questions about should a town build a new public library or should uh, the, the town pass a budget override so that they don't have to lay off teachers because of the recession. And it's only, you know, a half dozen people or a few dozen people at a time, but I believe that this is the start of something more significant. And that if we can think about approaching our problems in a different way and engaging in a different sort of politics, we can tackle some of the larger problems in our communities. So think about a problem that your community's facing. Actually, shout some out. So what are some national problems that we're facing? <laughs> Budgets. Groceries, food, education, pollution, okay? So as we think about these, imagine if we could get thousands of people in a community working on those problems. Imagine if we, but, and imagine if we could start small. Imagine if we could get one city uh, having a different approach to education, one city having a, getting completely energy independent. And what if we could do that tapping into the local knowledge and, and knowing how it's going to affect the people's lives on the ground who are shaped by that policy. That's the vision we have. And we've been fortunate enough that although we started in Western Mass, we've been approached by city councilors in Cambridge and uh, the chief technology officer of DC and the East Harlem Community Board. And we've been approached by some of the larger media institutions in this area who believe that media can be a bridge between civic information and civic action. And that newspapers can have a new way of interacting with their, uh, the community. So I... I believe this isn't an issue that's left or right. This doesn't belong to Republicans or Democrats, but that doesn't make it nonpartisan. We want to take the world of politics from a world of promises to a world of participation. And I hope that's an idea that can get a hold of you. Thanks very much.